ho, ho. Welcome to Inside Gaming. It's Christmas Eve, so you know the drill. We have a special episode of Roundup for you today. This year's almost over, so it's time to take a look back and recap some of the biggest video game news stories from the last 365.25 days. Because it's leap years. Days are actually like not exactly. Anyway, that's a whole thing. Now, this first segment might be caused by a bit of recency bias, but there was certainly a pattern of busted games that launched this year. Someone argue every year, but this year particularly so. One of the biggest offenders was Madden 23, which launched with a ton of bugs like defenders scoring touchdowns, invisible players, and teammates tripping each other, just like the real NFL. In the same month, Saints Row was critically panned for having really outdated gameplay, an uninteresting story, and of course, game-breaking bugs what's a broken game without some game-breaking bugs. There was also Overwatch 2, which had one of the worst launches we have seen in a game for a while. Although the game itself was mostly stable, overcrowded servers, in addition to being hit with two DDoS attacks, made it so many people couldn't even play until two days after release. Sorry for those people who took some time off work to play it at launch, oops. When players finally started getting in, they found they were missing content that was supposed to cross over from Overwatch 1, or that they had been locked out of half the roster because they were considered new users. Meanwhile, another set of players were still iced out due to a phone number requirement to play the game that excluded prepaid numbers. That sucks. More recently, Warzone 2.0 has had its own share of problems. Sonic Frontiers faced similar issues to Saints Row with its own open world woes and janky bugs. But Pokemon Scarlet and Violet really put the cherry on top of this broken ass game Sunday this year. It's not entirely unexpected given the Switch is really starting to show its age and modern Pokemon games don't exactly have a reputation for being technically impressive. However, this really might be the gin that draws enough negative attention to the franchise that Game Freak and or Nintendo are motivated to reevaluate their entire approach to major releases in the series. It's unfortunate because apparently the game itself, outside of its tech issues, landed really well with super fans, but even they couldn't ignore all the glaring performance issues, bugs, and duplication glitches present at launch. You hate to see it. Now, 2022 wasn't just a year of broken video games. We also saw one of the biggest leaks in the medium's history. Back in September, a GTA forums user named Teapot Uber Hacker, so you know he's real, published a post linking to over 90 videos of in development Grand Theft Auto 6 footage. Various clips from the leak began spreading quickly across YouTube and social media as 2K's legal team got to work trying to stamp it all out with DMCAs and takedown notices. Whack-a-mole, whack-a-mole, whack-a-mole. Longstanding rumors about a playable female protagonist were confirmed to be true. There was a clip that confirmed the setting as Vice City, and new mechanics were revealed for shooting while driving, as well as an updated conversation system. The leaker later edited their original post to include extortion, implying they were holding the source code for GTA 5 and 6 Ransom. That sucks. Bad hacker. 2K and Rockstar's official response to investors was that they didn't feel the massive leak would impact development of the game or sales. Later, it was reported that a 17 year old kid from London, alleged to be part of a known hacker group, Lapsus, was suspectedly responsible for the hack and arrested. The story is still developing, but in September, the teenager pled not guilty. Other notable leaks this year included the full roster for Street Fighter VI and a full playthrough of the Callisto Protocol just days before it came out. Another newsworthy topic that stirred up headlines this year was actually caused by a mobile game. Despite being immediately rejected by fans when it was announced and terribly riddled with predatory microtransactions, Diablo Immortal amassed 15 million players in its first two weeks. You guys have cell phones, right? This was immediately a controversy whether or not Blizzard lied about Immortal being quote, pay to win, and from there, mathematically inclined players and rich streamers raced to demystify the game's monetization model. We have a video from earlier this year that goes into all the details, but the TLDR is, at least within the first couple of months of launch, it would roughly cost over $540,000 to max out a single character. Oof. Big oof. Now, many have said there is plenty of free game in there, probably about a 10 hour campaign. But if you are someone who is susceptible to randomized drop mechanics, then don't download Diablo Immortal. It'll be very bad for you. As of August, Diablo Immortal has acquired over 30 million players. And as of November, the game has made over $300 million. Oof. Unless the government steps in, we will surely see more games like this in the future. 
don't. It's, it's horrible. This year, Nintendo got its card pulled. Things kicked off in April when former QA worker Mackenzie Clifton filed a report with the National Labor Relations Board claiming she was fired by Nintendo and contracting company Aston Carter in retaliation after simply asking about Nintendo of America's stance on unions. This prompted other employees to come forward about issues they faced at the company, spurring two investigative reports, one by Kotaku, who spoke with 10 employees about their experience working in quality assurance at the company, and another by IGN, who similarly spoke with a dozen employees, but also really dove into the history and work culture at Nintendo. Both revealed some horror stories and nasty allegations about the industry darling. Many of the issues seem to stem from unfair treatment and the stratification of full-time and contract workers. In short, as Kotaku put it, quote, Nintendo of America relies on an army of contract workers and product testing, customer service, and other departments without providing any health insurance, few opportunities to be promoted to full-time, and little recognition, both publicly and internally. That's all in addition to low pay. One employee said, quote, you can work next to someone side by side for 20 years and not get invited to the company cookout. Another added, quote, the idea of being hired full time is like a carrot on a stick to keep you dealing with the mistreatment. In October, it was reported that Nintendo settled with the original whistleblower who went to the NLRB for about $26,000. Whether or not conditions are improving overall is still unknown. Hopefully they are. There are plenty more stories to spotlight from 2022, but first let's talk about Brilliant.org. Brilliant.org is an online learning platform that focuses on specific STEM skills to help you level up and be a better thinker. I mean, education is a huge thing, right? I love learning new skills. As I've gotten older, I picked up some things. And so going to Brilliant.org can help you supply your brain with new knowledge. That's right, Brilliant.org can help you be a better problem solver in your everyday life. There are courses for ambitious people of all ages. Build confidence with hands-on learning and let your natural curiosity drive you not the threat of a test. Brilliant is the best way to learn math, science, and computer science interactively. There are courses for logic, computer science fundamentals, and scientific thinking. There are thousands of lessons with exclusive new content added monthly, and with Brilliant, you don't have to spend four years and a fortune to understand this stuff. All of the courses are crafted by award-winning teachers, researchers, and professionals, including specialists from MIT, Caltech, Duke, Microsoft, and Google. To get started for free, visit brilliant.org slash inside gaming, or click on the link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. That's brilliant.org slash inside gaming. All right, let's get back to it and talk about some of the biggest stories of the year. The next story had a whole whirlwind of twists when it happened and was probably one of the more shocking stories of the year. In October, Platinum Games announced Helena Taylor, the original voice actor for Bayonetta, would not be reprising her role in Bayonetta 3, citing, quote, various overlapping circumstances. Instead, she would be replaced by industry legend Jennifer Hale. Shortly after, and very close to the launch, Taylor came forward with a series of videos on Twitter claiming she was only offered a meager $4,000 total to voice all of Bayonetta 3. So she declined and then told everyone to boycott the game by donating their money to charity instead. The videos went viral and people went to bat. Fans were in an uproar demanding answers from Platinum Games and others even derided Jennifer Hale for taking on the role, but she's so awesome. An industry-wide conversation over proper compensation for voice actors also erupted. Platinum director Hideki Kamiya claimed that Taylor's statements weren't true, but then locked his account. A couple days later, a report from Bloomberg's Jason Schreier was published claiming two anonymous sources had shown him proof that Taylor was actually offered $15,000, but tried to negotiate for a six-figure sum and royalties instead. After fans turned their rage back on Taylor for a few days, she tweeted a new timeline of events, which more closely corroborated the Bloomberg story confirming a $15,000 offer had taken place. In short, it was a lie through omission. It was later discovered that at least three of the charities Taylor was promoting were anti-abortion groups known for spreading misinformation and providing unsafe health care. That sucks. As for the future of Bayonetta without Taylor, well, Bayonetta 3 won Best Action Game in the Game Awards. So that's pretty big. Last year, Valve president Gabe Newell teased a bunch of high school students about Steam games coming to console. Little did we know back then he was actually teasing an imminent announcement for the Steam Deck. The concept was simple and exciting, a Switch-like device that you can use to play games from your Steam library, but Steam had tried their hand at gaming hardware in the past, and outside of VR, none of it really took off, so many were skeptical. There was also smoke early on about Steam Deck being a little buggy and noisy around launch, and hey, maybe it's just a little noisy, but a number of updates have 
have greatly improved the device and it's really cool to take a huge chunk of your Steam library on the go or just access those games effortlessly from your couch. Being able to finely tune performance settings to optimize games like Marvel Spider-Man and Elden Ring for handheld is incredible. And it can also very easily be used as an emulator for retro gaming. But also if you just want a Steam machine you can pick up and play without fussing, it just works. Obviously Valve and various developers are still expanding the library of officially supported games, but the current list already totals over 6 Thousand. So yeah, in 2022, the Steam Deck came out and it actually is pretty great. Look, all of our top stories from 2022 just can't be negative. We gotta have some good ones in there too, right? Earlier this year, in a completely unprecedented move for the games industry, Sony announced a price hike for the PS5 after it had already been on the market for a year and a half. Usually consoles go down in price or at least get a little quieter slim models or something, but Sony said due to high inflation, adverse currency trends, and multiple issues with their global supply chain, they quote, made the difficult decision to increase the recommended retail price of the PlayStation 5 in select markets across Europe, Middle East, Africa, Asia Pacific, Latin America, as well as Canada. The price roughly went up by about $50 in pretty much every major market except the US. Go USA. A lot of other consumer electronics fluctuate in price, but this is the first time we've actually seen the price of a console increase. What makes this notable is it sets a precedent for Sony or other companies to potentially do it again, regardless of the reason. They did it once, they broke the seal. Following the PS5 price increase, both Nintendo and Xbox committed to holding the line on their hardware prices, but, Xbox is increasing the price of new and select titles to $70 next year. All right, we finally made it to the end and you knew this one was coming. The biggest video game news story throughout the year has hands down, without a doubt, been Microsoft's pending acquisition of Activision Blizzard. You have heard us talk about this one all year, so we'll try not to bore you with all the details over and over again, but we really have gotten a kick out of seeing two of the industry's biggest players go back and forth over the deal. Microsoft announced their plans to acquire Activision Blizzard for roughly $69 billion nice at the very beginning of the year and ever since then we've been getting a steady stream of new information and corporate statements laced with subtle and not so subtle call outs to kick things off microsoft promised that call of duty would still be available on playstation platforms after the acquisition but then it came to light via ceo of sony interactive jim ryan that sony felt the deal microsoft offered was inadequate on many levels allegedly microsoft only guaranteed the game would be multi-platform for at least the next three years after that sony got to work presenting an argument to regulators around the world that Microsoft's acquisition of Activision would not only cost Sony millions of dollars every year, but overall be anti-competitive with major negative implications for consumers and the industry at large. Basically, Microsoft needs 16 regulators from around the globe to sign off on the deal to make it happen. So far, Sony has seemingly helped convince two of the biggest regulators, the UK's Competition and Markets Authority and the United States Federal Trade Commission to be highly skeptical of the deal, resulting in more in-depth investigations. Well, actually, the FTC recently sued Microsoft, blocking the deal for now, but that hasn't seemed to slow Microsoft down. New concessions from Microsoft, even with the pending lawsuit, include offering Sony a 10-year licensing agreement, which would guarantee Call of Duty on PlayStation consoles for at least that long, and an additional offer, which would allow Sony to put Call of Duty games on its PlayStation Plus subscription service. There's no official word from Sony on either of those offers yet, but Microsoft has stated they are confident about facing the FTC in court. If Microsoft's plans to acquire Activision Blizzard are successful and the deal goes through, it'll be the largest acquisition in gaming history. All right, that's it for the biggest video game news updates of the year. We hope you've enjoyed keeping up with us. Thank you so much for watching and for all of your support. Have an awesome holiday break and we will be back next week with another special edition of Roundup. Roundup? Close, I almost made it. We'll call it there. Happy, happy holidays, everyone. Merry Christmas if you support it. I'm wishing for a new voice for next year. That's that's my my wish for, for, for my holiday season. Uh, okay, I'm gonna leave now. Bye everyone.